they are trying to be all buddy buddy but you know it's with a specific end in mind not with actually getting to know us but just to warm things up enough so they can hit us with their sales pitch or get us to buy from them and We've all felt that. So that's why, again, and I mentioned this and I'll keep mentioning this throughout all of these sessions and everything I always talk about, authenticity is so important as that first step. The five steps of the authentic persuasion pathway are rapport, empathy, trust, hope, urgency. Again, rapport, empathy, trust, hope, and urgency. Now that spells something that does not roll off the tongue. It spells refu. It's the best I could come up with. I've been teaching this for years. I came up with this 11 years ago with those terms and those terms. I could try to change it and make it into something fancy, make it something that rolls off the tongue better. But those words are perfect. They, they describe exactly what it is that you should be doing in those five steps. And keep in mind, refu, the authentic persuasion pathway can be applied to what you're doing now. This isn't to replace what you're doing. This isn't to throw out everything that you're doing now, your company has given you, or if you're a leader, I'm not telling you to throw out what you're doing now, unless it's not working. If it's not working, then please throw it out and apply this completely and start over, or email me, or reach out to me, or direct message me, or call me, and let me help you build an effective sales process. So this isn't meant to replace what you're doing unless it's not working, but to just give you some structure to what you're probably doing, but make it more effective. All right, so let's talk about rapport. When we talk about sales, and really the biggest thing here, and where we started, especially last week, is understanding that people are stuck in their comfort zone. They need help making a change and they're worried about making the wrong decision and they're looking for guidance and wisdom to make the right decision, which is why they're talking to you. It's why they risk talking to a salesperson who might talk them into something uh, that they don't wanna do, but ultimately they know there's something inside of them that they do want help with. They have a goal they wanna achieve, they have the pain they wanna get out of, and your job is to help them move away from the center of their comfort zone and to the outside of what they know into something new. Buying something equals change, which means it's something new. The first step is we've got to get people to like you and get to know you. And Bob Berg's advice, which I really like from his Go-Giver series and everything that he talks about, um, is that when all things are equal, people will do business with people they know, like, and trust. And that's such an important thing. Now, I will point out as we go through these sessions over the next few weeks, is that most people stop there. That's the biggest problem. A lot of people who default to order taker status and order taker mode, they end up stopping at no like and trust. They think if I get someone to like me enough, then they'll just buy from me, right? And that's not where we wanna start. So we wanna make sure we start on this path with rapport, so that we can break the ice and then move forward. Now, let's dive into this. The biggest key, and this is where, you know, you might think I don't need training on rapport, I can do that all the time. You gotta understand the fundamentals, also understand where people go wrong with building rapport. Now, rapport is there for us to warm up a conversation or relationship, break the ice, kind of get things moving forward, and we all do it all the time. Uh, it could be people that we know, people that we've met, people that we're meeting for the first time, phone calls, Zoom calls, chats on social media, LinkedIn. We do it all the time. Most people do it when they're just trying to get things moving. Now, we know when rapport is not being done, when somebody just jumps right into business, and it's similar to a doctor, which you would refer to them as having no bedside manner. They're not asking you questions. They're not wanting to know about you. They're not warming up the conversation. They're going straight into the business and it feels cold and it might not be effective and it might lead to not trusting them, which is where this is so important. We all know what rapport feels like. If you're watching this or listening to this and you're in sales, you know that you start with rapport. 
the key is, and here's some things I want you to consider as you're going through this and take some notes and see what applies to you and see what you can add, is that we have to make sure that we're building rapport for the right reasons. Now, you might think, of course, uh, of course I'm building rapport for the right reasons, but that's not always the case. And we have all probably experienced this as a customer in our lives when we are in a buying situation and we're talking to somebody in sales and it just feels like and we can feel the alarm bells going off inside and triggered such that it feels like their rapport building is fake and phony. It's schmoozy, it's gross, it's like oozing with cheesy rapport where it just feels like it's not authentic. They are trying to be all buddy buddy but you know it's with a specific end in mind, not with actually getting to know us, but just to warm things up enough so they can hit us with their sales pitch or get us to buy from them. And we've all felt that. So that's why, again, and I mentioned this and I'll keep mentioning this throughout all of these sessions and everything I always talk about, authenticity is so important as that first step. This isn't persuasive authenticity, it's authentic persuasion in that order you've got to be authentic and then when you apply this to the persuasion process which is where we're at now with this authentic persuasion pathway then it's going to be authentic you're doing it for the reasons that you know that are true for you that are going to be best for that conversation always make sure that you're building rapport for the right reasons and in a way that's right for you one of the things to keep in mind, and this is a good tip, is I see a lot of people, especially in call center environments or when they're observing or around other salespeople, especially early on, and they listen to somebody who's experienced and they listen to that person building rapport about sports or activities or things like that. And then they feel like, okay, I have to do that too. And I've seen many salespeople get into a trap where they feel like they've got to talk about sales or uh, sports, but they don't know anything about sports or they don't really care. And I know that's true for myself. Some sports I care about, some I really don't care about. And I also know that I don't have a very deep knowledge about it. So if I try to build rapport with somebody who knows a lot about sports and I kind of start it like, I think I know what I'm talking about. Hey, did you watch the big game last night? And then they go off and then like it exposes the fact that I don't know and I don't care. That's not good. So you want to be careful. You want to make sure that your rapport building is authentic for you. You've got to have that balance between small talk and chit chat and what you really care about, right? Do you really care about what the weather is like in Connecticut this time of year or what's going on at restaurants in Arizona where they live? Like if you don't care about it, it's going to be fake. It's going to feel like that. And so make sure whatever it is, it's true for you. People will appreciate, they'll recognize when it's fake and they'll appreciate when it's real and it's authentic and you're being transparent and you actually care, right? Like maybe you travel a lot and you do care what the weather's like there or you're interested in the local food scene or things like that. I have heard several salespeople over my career who they really love food and they'll get into restaurants and they travel a lot and they'll bring up a restaurant in an area in a city and people know it. And, you know, then they're building rapport that way and building that relationship, um, which I think is the key. Now, with that being said, here's the deal with rapport. One of the biggest challenges I see with people who struggle with sales and selling effectiveness is they will at times or most of the time end up spending too much time in rapport building so what they will do is they will get on a tangent they will build rapport and they will keep talking about things and they will chew up a lot of time that might be necessary for the sales process uh, but they're doing it on reports. So they're doing it talking about restaurants like that. There's one salesperson that comes to mind. He used to talk about restaurants. If somebody was in an area where he knew a restaurant and they would start talking about restaurants or food, literally 10, 15, 20 minutes would go by and they'd still be talking about food. And that's not good for several reasons. One is you want people to know, like, and trust you. You've got to warm it up and then you've got to move forward to the second step, which we're going to cover starting next week. So you don't want to spend too much time there, partially because if you do, 
What can happen is you can actually enter into the friend zone. I've seen this so many times, right? And we're all familiar with the friend zone when it comes to dating and relationships. Um, it's where somebody sees you as a friend and nothing more than that. It's why a lot of people don't like to do business with their friends because they know them so well. They're like, yeah, I, I know you and I like you. I definitely don't want to do business with you. In sales, that can happen a lot where you build so much rapport and it becomes so personal that now all of a sudden they see you as this person and not a professional. And it's not that we don't want them to see you as a person and, and respect you and appreciate you and trust you as a person and a fellow human and not identify you as a salesperson. And that's not my point. The point is that we want them to make sure they always see you as a sales professional, right? It's like if your doctor is just too buddy buddy, then there's a point at which like, okay, you're building a lot of rapport. We're talking about a lot of things. Do you actually know what you're doing from a medical perspective? Are you, can you actually help me? Or are we just going to be best buds? And so you've got to watch that. And I see a lot of people who end up going too far or too long with rapport. Rapport is not something you just do and then move on from and never do it again. You're going to do it throughout the conversations. It's all about continuing that rapport. And like I said, if you have multiple conversations with the same person through your sales cycle, you're going to start each one with some rapport, warming it up. How was your weekend? What do you have going on this week? Hey, you know, last time we talked, your son was at a soccer game and how did that go? You're going to do those rapport things throughout. It's always going to be a constant. So don't feel like you have to spend so much time up front doing it and then move on and never see it again or extend it too far. So you want to make sure that you have the right amount. When it comes to sales and what I see with people that struggle with moving on from the rapport step to the next phase is that they're either nervous about it or they don't know how to transition. One of the things you wanna be careful about is not giving this impression that you lack confidence in yourself or your sales process. And that is leading to why you're stuck in the rapport phase. If you're spending a lot of time building rapport and you notice that, what you might wanna do is have somebody else listen to your conversation, join in your meeting, listen to the recordings of your phone calls or your video uh, chats that you have and figure out like, is it too much time spent in rapport as a result of not feeling confident about moving it forward and worried that the person might see you as a salesperson or you just don't know what to do or you're not sure. So you wanna make sure that you spend the right amount there and get some feedback. Always get some feedback about where, how that rapport phase seems to go and then moving on.